What a cheap trick. This isn't the Beatles. Before we start talking about that, I thought I'd give you some fresh news. Um, you probably heard already, but if not, um, Sam Mendez has been given the rights to the Beatles songs and their life stories and is going to make a four-picture biopic of each Beatle that's slated for release in 2027. Um, these are going to be from the point of view from the four different Beatles. So there'll be one for George, one for Ringo, one for Paul, and one for John. Uh, I thought that was interesting. You probably have seen that already. But now I'm going to talk about something that's 15 years old. I'm a little slow to the game, but I wanted uh, to go over this. Um, in 2007... You know what? I'm going to read right from this. I think it can tell it better instead of me stumbling around. So this is a cheap trick performing Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band live. Um, I'd, I'd never bought this before. I was aware of it, but I've never listened to it. And uh, so I decided to pick it up on CD. And I'd, since it is Beatle related, I figured I would discuss it. Um, this is what it says in the notes. In 2007, we were honored to be special guests of the L.A. Philharmonic Orchestra to perform the 40th anniversary of Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band for two sold-out shows in Los Angeles. We performed a track-by-track -track rendition with the orchestra, an Indian music ensemble, and an array of several very special guests. We also had the privilege of working with Jeff Emmerich once again. Jeff engineered the original album for the Beatles in 1967 and worked with us with George Martin on All Shook Up in 1980. In memorial of the loss of loved ones to prostate cancer, Cheap Trick and all the special guest artists are donating their share of all proceeds towards achieving eradication of such disease. So um, I thought I would give this uh, a listen. It is pretty good. I uh, The first time I listened to it, I, I got off work and it had showed up in the mail. And I listened to it... <clears throat> I thought it was okay. Um, the next day, I thought I'd give it a try. I turned up the volume a little louder. I liked it more. Today, when I got off work, I turned it up quite a bit louder. It's it's good loud. It's a very uh, raucous um, show. Um, what I was more impressed, though, instead of with the uh, rock and roll part of it, there is... What really uh, caught my ear was uh, Within You, Without You. Um, on the original album, that's, that's I'm sad to say, George, it's still my least favorite track. Uh, I've learned to appreciate it, but not as much as the other songs. Hearing that Indian ensemble at live, something about that was kind of uh, interesting to me. I kind of like that. What... Uh, what I would recommend, if, if you're a Cheap Trick fan, I'm sure you already have this. Um, but if you're not, um, what I would say is this seems like something that would have been great to see live. I'm sure it would have been spectacular. The problem with having it on a CD and listening to it at home, if you're like... Uh, most Beatle fans, you're going to have the original Sgt. Pepper. You probably just want to listen to the original. I don't know how many times uh, I will, will listen to this. It's almost like a novelty CD to me. Um, but that uh, all the donations are going to uh, prostate cancer, that's, that's admirable. So speaking of cheap tricks... The other part of this video I want to talk about, um, first of all, um, I came across the photograph of me in 1981 when I was living in San Lorenzo, California. I'll put up on the screen here. Um, I just want uh, you to see 
uh, how I live my life, all those posters. Um, I think uh, in the picture, there's only one Beatles. It's the meat, meat cover um, poster I have up. But that's, that's, that's pretty much me in 1981. Not much has changed except I've lost a lot uh, more hair and I've gotten fatter. But I wanted to share that with you just uh, to give you a little bit of my past. And then as a little bit of uh, self-promotion, this is, this is where the cheap trick really lies. I have published a couple books and I just I thought it'd be interesting to read to you uh, from my forward how I'm always keeping the Beatles up front. I'm always afraid people are going to forget the Beatles. So in my books, which are going to last for a long time and forever, people will always read this and know uh, that there was a band called the Beatles, and they can uh, do the research and find it. Anyway, so I wrote these books uh, when I was coming out of a, of a a spiral of depression and I started listening to the Beatles again and I started feeling better. I started buying records again. Um, I decided I was going to get these books published and I did. So um, I'm just going to read you a little preface. It won't take long. Don't worry. I'm not going to read I'm not going to read any poetry. I've done some experiments with that, and even my friends and family don't want to hear that crap. So, But I do want to read this preface about just the Beatle parts. Uh, I talk about there were th at least three sources of inspiration. I talk about um, Carson McCuller's book, The Ballad of the Sad Cafe, and other stories. I talk about um, Todd Colby's book of poetry called Splash State, and then finally, now I'm quoting myself, finally during this process, I was rediscovering the Beatles. Always an inspiration, I was re-listening to them with the vigor of a man experiencing second childhood. So forgive occasional references in such titles as Tomorrow Never Knows and She Said, She Said. So here I am, giving the Beatles a plug because they, they need to... As much help as they can get uh, you know they're struggling um, this other book it doesn't talk about the Beatles but uh, I'm gonna link to these things if you're curious they're very cheap I think uh, the most expensive one is like 475 or 575 I'll link to them if you're curious don't feel obliged to um, don't feel obliged to uh, buy these things um, the other thing I wanted to talk about, how, how else I'm keeping the Beatles. Um, uh, uh, this is another way I kept the, the story going. So in our local paper, uh, a reporter, uh, that's me, that's me. Uh, besides writing, I also uh, paint, and I had, a, I had a show, a local show, um, before this article. And... They were asking, or the reporter was asking some questions. Um, here is, here's another way I keep the Beatle legend alive. After, after a bout with depression, Morse found that listening to the Beatles brought him happiness and he felt good. His paintings are frequently made while listening to their music, and some of his written work may show an occasional song reference. So that's just my way of helping the Beatles out any way I can. Um, that's all I really had today. To, I wanted to talk about this thing from 15 years ago that everybody else in the real world has already talked about or pushed aside and then I wanted to self-promote a little bit but keeping that Beatle theme going so thanks for listening I hope everything is going well for you thanks for sitting through this uh, I know it was a little uh, self-serving today but uh, I did want to talk about these things as they are Beatle related hope you're doing well um, thank and I hope you've had a good day I hope you have a good week. 
and I hope you have a good lifetime. Thank you so much, and I'll see you again soon.